Hello, besties and bosses. I get so excited when the technology just works. We went live, no technical glitches. I'm so happy about that. We also, y'all have to let me know. We tested setting up an event for this live stream, which I don't usually do. Did it notify y'all? Was it annoying? Did it work? <laughs> Did it just notify me? How did, y'all have to let me know how that worked. I'm gonna pull this up in the group though so I can see your comments. So nope, that's my old masterclass from yesterday. By the way, for those of you who joined the fully booked masterclass, first and foremost, thank you. And that was by far, it was like four or five times the most attendance we've ever had. I'm so grateful to all of you. I know it was quite a bit longer than usual. And I just so appreciate you all for joining and for the lovely feedback I've gotten from some of you. It will be live through the end of today. So hang with me for today's live. It's not going anywhere. I've asked my team not to take it down until tomorrow since some of you have wanted a little bit more time. So we're not like trying to take it away from you. I just want to encourage people to actually watch it. And I know if I leave it up there for months, y'all will like keep pushing it off and not, not watch it. And I want you to get the value from it. I've had so many people comment as, just in terms of how really valuable it was. And they were shocked at how much value I gave. So join me for that. But hang for this conversation first. And then that will still be there. And again, we are not, there's the live for today. We're not going to pull it down until tomorrow. Today, we're going to talk manifesting. We don't talk about this a lot in the group, but I put a poll on Instagram, which if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's just my name. I'm having a lot of fun there with reels, but in the stories I actually shared yesterday, <laughs> this is way more information than you need, then we'll talk manifesting. I have been having a little bit too much fun. This is my, my new hobby that I shouldn't admit to, but apparently... Apparently, it's giving me more joy than it should. Our The phone company we're with got hacked, and our my husband and my phone numbers were two of the phone numbers that got compromised. So we have been getting, like every other day, I get a message from someone who's basically a scammer who you know stole our number. And so if, I've started effing with the scammers by writing them back as if I know them and asking them for money. Um, I'll, I'll post a comment afterwards about it yesterday. It's giving me way too much joy. So I shared that on Instagram, but I also put a poll. There's a reason I'm talking about this. I put a poll or I asked, I asked everyone in stories if they wanted me to talk more about manifesting because I don't talk about this a lot. And it was like a resounding, almost like a hundred percent. Yes. So I'm bringing that topic to you today since apparently y'all want to hear more of it. I create these topics for you. So if there's anything else you want me to do a live stream on or have a conversation on, let me know in the comments, DM me. If you're on Instagram, DM me. If you're on my email list, shoot me a message. If it's something that feels within my wheelhouse, I'll always speak to it. So we're gonna talk about manifesting through a magic in air quotes lens, but also from a really practical strategic lens. I know that I don't talk about manifesting quite a bit because I know I have quite a few non-woo clients and non-woo people in my space. And I think if you're not woo, so to say, it can just sound really airy-fairy. And yet I also think manifesting is quite practical. And the way I think about it, I think we are always manifesting all day, every day, whether we're aware of it or not. And when you know other people are talking about manifesting, I really like to think about it more just in terms of we're always manifesting, but how can we do so more intentionally to get what we want? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to give you a little bit of just neuroscience 101. I'm obviously not a neuroscientist, but I find when I understand the science behind something maybe more mystical, it helps ground it in for me. Obviously, if you just fully you know, believe in multiple realities and the world, the earth is a hologram and all of that, you don't need to hear this aspect of it. But I think for those of you who kind of are like so far away from that side of the conversation. I think having a little bit to ground this in to help you make sense of what we're talking about. Like manifesting is just to make real. We're doing that again all day, every day. I think we'll make it helpful. And then I'm going to talk about, I think with manifesting talk, what happens in our space. There's both the whole, like you have to be high vibe all the time. And I think it can really veer into toxic positivity or where we're using manifesting as a way to bypass emotions or to bypass responsibility. And that is not what I am about at all. But I, I do think what can also happen is we can get so into the energetics of manifesting, which is a part of it, that we use that as a way to sort of bypass the strategy and action side of business. So I'm going to talk about how those play together and how I really see that strategy and action is still very much a part of manifesting and where energy comes into play because I do think energy still comes into play. And then when I say here, I always want to talk about the truth about manifesting higher levels of business and financial success and the mindset work. I give almost all my clients to help them hold and keep more and more so they can stretch and scale more. In fact, I just had a conversation with a client about this yesterday, I think. So as I'm going through this, again, this is a conversation we don't talk about all the time. If you have questions, throw them at me. I 
I'm happy to answer anything I can. I always want this to be a value for you. Oh, before I forget, we are doing a giveaway to thank you for being here. So all you have to do is say hi, leave me a comment, and we are giving away a copy of my workshop that is helping you get clear on your unique millionaire money blueprint. So it's helping you get clear on your blueprint with money and then how to use that to create more richness and wealth in your life. So that is our giveaway today. I think it's a pretty, pretty good workshop. It's how I think about money and manifesting practically and not practically. So let's talk kind of the science of manifesting first so that we're just understanding a little bit. We're on the same page. It doesn't feel so airy fairy. That being said, if you do believe in you know, the world is a holographic, um, percept- like, um, what is it, a holograph of our our mind, I'm, I'm here for, for that explanation as well. I have friends and can get down with conversations that we are living in a video game. Like, I'm here for all of that. And what I always like to remember is we're also living in a 3D world in reality. So even if we believe, like, we incarnated and we chose this, you know, spirit and soul, like, all of these different things we might believe, we still chose to come to a 3D world and a 3D reality. And we we are still operating by this 3D reality's rule set. So even if we believe this is a video game, so to say, we, we still chose to come to this video game. We still have to play by this video game's rules. That doesn't mean that we then... Um, if we want to manifest what we want, that we can like choose a different video game. And I, I think what I also like to remember is we, we are just in terms of the way our brains work, we are always at choice, whether we realize it or not. And we're always at a cause and effect. Bless you. Um, we're always at a cause and effect. Um, but we're just not always really clear and intentional with our choices and what we're at a cause and effect for. And I think, and, or with manifesting conversation, the pendulum can really swing and we're like, well, I'm always a choice and I'm always a cause and effect. I think we can like almost misconceive that to think like, well, now I'm like, I can make anything I want happen in a split second. And we forget that we're not living in a vacuum, right? We're still in a 3D reality with the rules of the 3D reality where there are other people who are also manifesting and there are different circumstances that come to play. Like, like I just said, one of my friends thinks of the world we're in as a video game. And I actually really like that as a way to think about manifesting because you can manifest winning the video game, but you still have to go through the different levels, right? There's still going to be a monster. There's still going to be like, you still need to know the little things to jump on to get to the secret portal door and world, right? Like you still have to, you still have to handle whatever is in front of you to manifest winning the video game, if that helps as a, as an analogy. So I, I just like to remember, yes, we are always a choice. We are always a cause and effect. And our thoughts and our feelings influence what we notice, what we don't notice, the actions we do or don't take that action that then influence what we're at cause of and what we're at effect of and the results we get, right? Hopefully that makes sense there. But that doesn't mean we're in a vacuum, right? There are other people, there are other circumstances that come into play. And then there's also the whole element of time, I think, where a lot of people get screwy with manifesting is they think of manifesting as I can just make demands for things I'm uncomfortable about to happen tomorrow and forget about the element of time. I, like there are certain things out of our control, including time, certain things. What is it? The Warren Buffett quote that like no matter how good you are at manifesting, he probably doesn't use the word manifesting, but it still takes a woman nine months to manifest a baby or like it still takes a man and a woman in nine months to manifest a baby, I think is the quote. Right? We forget about these things and then we get mad when we're wanting to manifest something that takes nine months and it hasn't happened in one month. And what I will go into this a little bit more, but what I like to remember is when we're like mad at timelines, we're like, well, this means manifesting didn't work. Cause I said I was going to manifest a million dollars tomorrow and it didn't happen. We have to think about what we just said. We're always a choice. We're always a cause and effect. It's always our thoughts, our emotions, right? Like our energy. That's what that's made up of that influences what we notice, what we don't notice, what we take action on. And the results we get, if we think about, I need to manifest a million dollars this week, or I need to manifest a bunch of clients this month, actually what we're at thought of and what we are feeling and what our energy is, is neediness, is scarcity, is lack. It's not actually the million dollars or all of the clients. And so in that way, we can still see you're still manifesting exactly what you're at choice around, what you're at cause of, what your thoughts, your energies, your feelings are. It's just we think it's something different because we're using words like millions or clients and we think that's what we're manifesting. We have to think about what is the mindset, the energy underneath that scarcity, lack, um, it's not happening fast enough, right? We're just getting back more of what we are actually thinking and believing. Um, let me know if that is, if that makes sense there. I would, I'm hoping the way I'm describing this will, will help for everyone. On the more kind of like brain neuroscience of this, I'm sure you all have heard this so much. I feel like this is what every manifesting teacher talks about, but I'm going to repeat it for those of you who haven't or who just need that reminder. 
there is a part of our brain called the reticular activating system, the RAS. I really, I really feel like I've probably talked about this 100, 100 times, even though I don't talk about manifesting a lot, so bear with me. But what this part of our brain is designed to do is it's basically a filtration system. We are all day, every day, because we are humans in a 3D reality, there is so much information that is in our periphery at any given time. This isn't even all the thoughts you have swirling around your brain, but if we just think about any given moment, how many thoughts how much information there is for us to filter through. I live in New York City, even here doing this live stream in my office and it's calm and it's quiet. There's construction happening outside the window. My husband just sneezes in the other room, right? Like there's there's so many, there's, you know, Facebook and the comments that pop up here. There's whatever's popping up on the side of my screen. There's, there's so much different, there's the ring light in my face. There's so much different information around me at any given time, plus what I'm actually wanting to deliver. And if, and the reticular activating system, what it's designed to do is help filter in what we do and don't notice so that we're not, like we would all crumple up in a ball, right? I, I really, I don't know if this is true, but I believe, um, I'm sure there's science on this that I'm just not aware of, but I think this must have evolved in our brain as a survival mechanism. Both yes, to manifest what we do and don't want, but if I can notice all of the stimulus all day long, right, like that's, that's probably what it more like what it feels like when I'm having a trauma response where it's like I'm all open nerve endings because we're just picking up everything around us. And so the reticular activating system, what it's doing is it's helping you filter in what to pay attention to, what not to, right? Outside of me referencing those different things, all I'm noticing is this conversation here. I'm not noticing the New York City noise and the construction outside and all of that that's going on. And so the way your reticular activating system works is what your predominant thoughts are, what your predominant beliefs are, what your predominant energy is, right? This is, this is telling, it's sort of, think of this like the algorithm, right? It's telling the algorithm of your brain what to notice, what to pay attention to, and what to put in your, in your um, sphere, what you can notice. I'm going to use the algorithm as an example because I think that's actually, I share this with my clients. They're like, oh, that makes so much sense. So you know if we're on Instagram, if I open up my Instagram and I open up my husband's Instagram, even though we have the same cell phone provider, we have two completely different feeds. Literally the content I see is completely different than the content he sees, even though we're on the same app, on the same sofa, right? Completely different feeds. And that's because our algorithms have really gotten attuned to what we put into the app, right? What we pay attention to, what we look at, what we're interested in, what we search for, what we like, what we don't like, right? It's really well attuned. If you run ads, you know how well attuned that algorithm is. And so the algorithm is just always paying attention to and it's spitting in front of us, whatever's really relevant to us. That doesn't mean there isn't all of this other information on Instagram, but if everything that was on Instagram was on both of our feeds, right? The Instagram feed would blow up if that were a thing. Hey, Nora, um, live, nice to, nice to have you live. And you got entered to, to win our giveaway as well as for saying hi, so thank you. Let me know if this is if this is landing for you with the algorithm as well. So if if the algorithm didn't filter, right? If we didn't have an algorithm, social media, I don't even it's already overwhelming for many people. Can you just imagine if every single piece of information on on Instagram was always on your feed at the same time? It would be bonkers, but that's why we have an algorithm, right? And it filters and shows you exactly what you want to see and it adjusts based on based on how you interact with it. That's how the reticular activating system in our brain is with the world, and that's kind of how manifesting works. The, man, the reticular activating system in your brain is the algorithm of your brain based on your thoughts, your beliefs, your energy, your actions, what you, what your experience is, right? You tell that algorithm in your brain of all the things in your world, what to notice, what not to notice, what to pay attention to, what not to pay attention to, what to take action on, what not to take action on. Otherwise, we would all curl up in balls and be overwhelmed by the world, right? It's a self-protection um, survival mechanism, but it's also how what affects our ability to manifest. Again, we are always manifesting. It's just, are we doing so intentionally or not? And I always think about this with clients. I find it really fascinating. You know, if, if two clients are working, have the, kind of the same skill set or the same place in business and are working on the same strategy, they might get two really different results. And part of it is because of what their thought is, what their belief is, what their energy is, what's filtering through the reticular activating system. One of them, right, might have the belief, the energy that like there are clients everywhere, there's opportunities everywhere. And so that is what they're filtering for. So they literally notice opportunities everywhere. And that person they talked to at the coffee shop because a client that person they just you know message on Instagram becomes a client they watch my live stream and they're like oh my gosh I can pick that nugget up and use that or they've 
they're looking for a coach, right? And they find their next mentor, right? They see opportunity everywhere. Another client can be like, nothing ever works for me. It's no one likes to pay for, for my services. It's so hard to book clients, right? So they just, that's what their reticular activating system, their algorithm is feeding for them. It's just evidence of that's exactly true. And so that's what they're seeing all day, every day. So that's a little bit of the science behind how manifesting works. I think when we can understand that a lot of it really is like, yes, we can, be, if you believe in universe, God, unicorns, crystal spirits, the holographic universe, all of that, that's great. I think that's an added element of like kind of the magical side to it. I personally do believe in some of that because sometimes things I'm just like, how? But if you're just like super rooted, grounded in 3D reality and all of that sounds wackadoo, I think just understanding at the end of the day, it's our brain. I think our brains are pretty magical anyway. If we think about the power of our brain, it's pretty wild and effing insane. And so I think that can just help give some understanding to manifesting and how you can manifest a fully booked business or a million dollars or whatever results you want in your business. Let me know if you have questions around that. Let me see if I had any other thoughts on that. If not, I'm going to share a little bit more about, because we're talking about you know, manifesting a fully booked business, manifesting more money, manifesting more clients. And what I said in the description for this live stream, one of the things I wanted to talk about is Great. So kind of like how does energy mindset plus strategy plus action come into play there? Because if you know my coaching framework, I focus on clarity, mindset, strategy, and action. I don't only focus on the mindset and the energetics piece of it. And I actually think, I don't want to frame this. I think you can get really far away, quite honestly, with mindset and energetics alone. But I think um, you would have to be so, 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 so locked in on what a belief is without any scarcity, without any resistance. And I also, I, I'm just thinking, I, I just also think that action is what precedes any manifestation, right? Like there still has to be some action involved, even if it's action from someone else. And what I always think about is, so let me, let me rewind the table a bit here so this makes more sense. When people talk about manifesting, they talk a lot about the energy, right? And if it's all about your energy and you being an energetic match for something. And I absolutely agree that that's true. And I'll explain what I mean by that. And I think what gets confusing then is we think it's all just energy, right? We just want to do a bunch of energy work and we miss out on the the practical side of things like strategy and action that get results because we're like, well, I'm manifesting, right? I should just be able to like energetically be, I should like, how do I just be an energetically ma match for a fully booked business? How do I be an energetic match for a million dollars? Right? And we just focus on the energetic match part. And I think what we forget is if you are actually an energetic match for a fully booked business, you would be taking action like a fully booked business owner would, right? The energetic match of a fully booked business owner is taking certain actions, right? It's getting on calls with clients. It's doing certain marketing, right? It's your, I always see your strategy and your action as the expression of your energy. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you, if you're like, I want to be a millionaire, I'm going to be an energetic match for a million dollars. Well, being an energetic match for a million dollars, if that's something you're going to earn, even if you're going to win it through the lottery, right? If you're like, I'm an energetic match for winning the lottery, and you're like so super behind that, you still have to go buy the lottery ticket, right? Like that is part of being the energetic match. Going to buy the lottery ticket is the expression of, it is the action and the expression of I am in belief. Um, but that's why people talk a lot about like, you have to be it before you are it. I think that's what we're talking a little bit more about. And that's kind of where we look at strategy and action coming into play. But what it does is it changes the way in which you're taking your strategy and action. And so kind of, um, I'm just going to see if I have questions around this. So let's see. Nora says, when I learned, understood that we were always manifesting intentional or not, the motivation really shows up. Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it like... It's so fascinating to me. Nora, you'll have to, and, and Nora, do you prefer Nora or Nora Lee? I'm just seeing it's both names. So I want to make sure I'm um, calling you by what you prefer. And anyone else, let me know if this is true or not. When I, same kind of to what you're saying here, when I realize we're always manifesting no matter what, and we get what we predominantly think about and what we're an energetic match for, it is fascinating to me how that, I think I wrote a, a reel on this last week on Instagram, that has been one of my like hacks to stop being my overthinking and my worrying. Because what I realized, James Wed Wedmore has a quote that's something along the lines of worrying is just making a plan for what you don't want to have happen. And it just really clicked. And I'm like, wait, wait a second. If I am always manifesting whether I'm intentional or not, and I get what I'm an energetic match for, I show up 
in a different way, you know, based on what I'm an energetic match for. I get what I think of most of the time. If I'm just indulging worry thoughts all of the time, what I'm essentially saying is I want to manifest all of the things I'm worrying about. What I'm programming into the algorithm in my brain, the reticular activating system is all of the things I'm worrying about, right? And, and then I shouldn't be surprised when things are showing up for me that are a match for what I've been worrying about, whether it's the exact thing or you know something that's congruent with it, right? That is evidence of manifesting. And so I think sometimes if we don't believe in manifesting, what can be helpful and not as a way to make yourself wrong, please, for the love of all good things, don't leave this live stream and use this exercise as a way for anyone to beat up on yourself. That, that doesn't help you manifest anything. And that's just never the intention with any of this work. I always think about with anything manifesting, mindset, energy work, healing, anything like that, we always want to be curiously compassionate with ourselves. But I always like to look at what are some things I manifested that maybe I say I didn't want, that maybe are negative in air quotes. And how can I look at two things? One, how can I look at you know, what was my energy? What was my thought process? Like how, not like, oh, you made that happen. You made bad things happen to you. And for those of you who have trauma in your past, I want you to also remember what I said at the beginning of the live stream. We live in a 3D reality, a 3D world where there are other humans, there are other players and other circumstances and people who are also manifesting. So sometimes, right, we are, other people are, are impacting us. It's like going through the video game, right? Like no matter how, great you are you still have to beat the boss or different things show up so this isn't a place to make yourself wrong for things that that aren't anyone's fault i want to be so careful because this can get very sticky very quickly but if we look at certain things like um like something more benign um maybe a result in your business not being fully booked for example that you really really want or not booking a client you wanted or something like that if you look back at what was what was my thought process what was my energy around this you know if you look back you can start to see oh i can actually see how i manifested that result which i think can be so empowering because then we can see how at choice and cause and effect we really are i think it actually feels so disempowering i always say to clients when they have a launch and it didn't go the way they wanted it's only a bus if we don't understand why that happened if we understand why that happened and can make sense of it then we know what to shift and adjust and so i think it's the same thing that's true with manifesting i think it can be so powerful and empowering but also help you to see how you're always manifesting and the other thing i like to ask myself and again not as a way to make yourself wrong but if I get a result that isn't what I said I wanted, I always want to be curious, was there a part in me that actually wanted what happened, right? Was there a part of me that actually wanted what I got more than what I said I wanted? There's a quote by Carolyn Elliott um, who wrote Existential Kink, and it's something along the lines of, you don't get what you say you want, you get what you actually want. And I just find that to be so, so true. You know, sometimes we say we want the client, but the truth is subconsciously, if we're really honest with ourselves, we don't want the client because we're overwhelmed. Our schedule is too full. We are scared of success. We're scared we're not good enough. We're scared of what's going to happen if we have to pay more taxes. We're scared of what someone's going to think if we're more successful. We don't actually want to deal with the responsibility. Insert, insert, insert the thing. We don't want it more than we do want it. And I think that can be really empowering again, not as a way to make yourself wrong, but just to help you see you're always more in control, more at choice, more in power than you think you are. And I think this can then help us see like, what is the real mindset work, right? If we want to manifest something, these are all the things then do we either just, I always like to look at it. I was like, well, look at how good at manifesting I am. I got exactly what I wanted. I'm so good at this. Now let me get clear on what I actually want so I can go and manifest that. But it can also then help us see if we have resistance or fear around something we say we want, what we need to move through to be able to get that result. Um, hi, Sonia. Nice to have you live. Nora Lee. Okay. I'll make sure that I um, call you Nora Lee. I apologize for, for calling Nora. Thank you for that. And Sonia, you're entered as well for, for our giveaway. We do a giveaway every week if you join live and say hi. Let me know if that's landing, questions, thoughts. Otherwise, I'll move move on. But definitely here for for hearing, hearing your thoughts around that. And um, yeah, if you had any questions around that. So kind of going back to to getting fully booked, right? And the, the strategy and action side around that. I think when we're looking at how do we manifest getting fully booked, how do we manifest a million dollar business? How do we manifest a six figure business? Whatever that is for you. I think we start to look at, yes, it's all about being an energetic match. But remembering, I think we hear energetic match and we think it's like, I just need to be high vibe and positive all the time. And we sort of miss all of the nuance as to what that really means. Being an energetic match is really more being the embodiment of and in the belief of 
the thing you're saying you want and actually being a match for actually wanting that versus being positive and high vibe all the time. And then taking the strategic action, right, that is an alignment to what you're an energetic match of, right? That's the... Um, that is the expression of that energy. I'm going to give some examples here so that doesn't, because otherwise I feel like that just sounds like a bunch of obtuse kind of weird, weird words. But in terms of like the energetic piece, there's, there's two, two thoughts that come up. First and foremost, I think this is just so helpful because I did not know this when I started my business. You can be in a horrible mood. You can be sad. You can be grieving. You can be going through a breakup. You can be going through hell in your personal life and you can still manifest a fully booked business and make an F ton of money. When we talk about like, that's why I get the whole high vibe thing I think is quite toxic in many ways. But when we're talking about manifesting, when you're talking about manifesting a fully booked business, where the energy, where the ma- uh, mindset, where the like in air quotes high vibe matters is in the direction towards the thing you're wanting to manifest that you say you want. So if you're going through a bunch of personal stuff, but when you think about your coaching business or your OBM business or your design business, or if you're a lawyer, whatever your business is, and you want to get that fully booked, when you think about that, your energy, your mindset, your thoughts around that are... Oh my gosh, of course I'm going to get fully booked. Like I'm, I'm going to be fully booked. This is easy. Like I love this. Like clients love to pay me. There are clients everywhere. My strategy always works for me. Like I show up when I show up and deliver clients come through the door. Right? When that is a positive energetic match for the thing you want, even if you're as a human feeling like a hot mess express, right? You will then be an energetic match for the thing you're saying you want, and that is going to affect the way, what you notice, right? Your algorithm, what opportunities you notice, what strategies you notice, what you're available for, what you're not available for, what you'll take action on, and those results you get. However, if it's like, just, I, I, I hate, like, it's just the truth. It is going to be really tough. You could be the most high vibe human in the entire world. Everything could be like roses and daisies and unicorns in your personal life. But if when it comes to your business, you're like, my business sucks. No one wants to pay my services. It's really hard. It's too crowded online. It's going to take me forever. I'm not good enough. No one will ever pay me. Um, There's just like too many people, right? That would still be a negative energetic match for the thing you're saying you want to manifest. If we're talking about a fully booked business or six figures or multi six figures, whatever that is, like it's just not possible for someone like me, right? If it doesn't matter how maybe high vibe you are outside of your business, if that is the mindset and the energy in your business, it's just going to be really tough to create results in your business. But and this is, I'm hoping this all makes sense for y'all. It ends up all being, what's our mindset? What's our belief? What are we an energetic match for? Let's say your belief set is the best way to make him get fully booked is to be a curmudgeon who's super negative, works really hard and grinds it out. And then that's what you're an energetic match for. And you show up for that where you're negative and you grind it out. You will get fully booked because that is what you believe is required to get fully booked that is what you're an energetic match for and that is what you will show up for notice opportunity for does that does that make sense i think otherwise we hear manifesting and think it just means we have to be yippity skippity like positive all the time and I, i just don't think it's that at all it's what is your predominant thought what is your predominant belief what do you say to yourself more than you say anything else what is the energy of that how does that energy get expression strategy and action that is what you will make to be true it's sort of like the worrying thing you can manifest your worries right if a worry is your predominant thought right that is just that is also manifesting so hopefully 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 that makes makes sense and so this is where i find them when i look at supporting clients to get fully booked or to make six figures or multi six figures or whatever the result sell out i have a client who just um had a really successful launch and it sold out her launch she had above she had above a 10 percent or 15 percent conversion rate which is quite high and quite good i'm very proud of her but when i look at the work we're doing there this is the kind of manifesting work we're doing right we're, we're doing the manifesting work to get the mindset and energy on board so she can be the type of business owner who really believes this gets to be true for her who shows up that way as that person and then who has a strategy and takes action on that strategy from that energetic place of the person who believes this gets to work for her gets to be true for her and that's when your strategy blows up. That's why two people can have the same strategy, take the same action and get different results. That's why my husband and I can take our iPhones out, get on Instagram at the same exact time 
and we will have two completely different feeds, right? Because we have two different algorithms happening for us. Our strategy, our action is exactly the same, right? But the algorithm feeding is differently. Your algorithm in your brain, which is based on your thoughts, your mind, your feelings, and your energy is going to be different. I'm going to give you an example outside of business that might um, make this make this land a little bit more. When my husband and I are about to celebrate 10 years together, um, dating and three years married. And when I first met him, I'd been single for five years. And I'd ended like a tumultuous 10 year relationship. So I was single for a while. I had just moved to New York City and I was like on all the dating apps. And when I was an energetic match for someone who really wanted to be single, but who said I wanted to meet someone, but if we were honest, like you don't get what you say you want, you get what you actually want. What I really wanted was to be single and not to have to meet someone like my ex. So when that was what I was an energetic match for, right? And when my thought process was, um, I don't trust guys. I think a lot of guys are gonna be like my ex. I actually really like to be single. I actually really like my free time, right? When that is, was my thought process, and that was what I was an energetic match for, I used the dating apps and I met people and I went on dates. and. Guess what kind of people I met? I filtered for and attracted and met people who were exactly a match for what I, who didn't want to be in a relationship, who were unavailable or who kind of matched some of the qualities of what I really just thought all men were going to be like. Then I started to do some healing work, right? Then I started to go to therapy. Then I started to do some work and really got to a place where I thought differently about dating. I wanted something different. I was ready for a relationship. I felt I really deserved to be in a healthy, happy, committed relationship. I also got to a place where I was like, I'm happy if I'm single. I don't need someone, but I really love to be in like very detached, right? Um, which is kind of a whole nother side to manifesting, but where I was sort of like, I'm so available for this and ready for this. And I know I can have this. And also if it takes 10 years, I'm cool with that. Still on the same da dating apps, still taking the same action, but two things changed, right? My, my thought process, my predominant thoughts changed, my energy changed, which changed the algorithm in my brain, right? For what I noticed, what I didn't notice, which then changed the expression of my action. And so same strategy, got in the same apps, same literal same apps, same people to the degree that I had matched with my husband on our dating app six months prior never noticed him before we never had a date when that shift happened and this is like not a joke this is so real i met him he he reached out and we had a date a week later so we could say i manifested that or we could say all of those shifts happened right and then i was energetically different algorithm was different was noticing different things was probably behaving on the app in a different way right so therefore i was filtering for different people i was a match for different people and i met my husband um like a week after that shift and so I think sometimes it's helpful for us, for us to see examples outside of business. That That is the same process in which we manifest anything in or out of business. I think just sometimes in business, it feels confusing because we sort of have this very practical things like strategy, which I believe in. And then we have this like, mindset, energetic, woo side of things, and it can feel very confusing, but I want you to see they really, really live together. And when we get them working together, that's when everything gets really fun and easy in business. And when they're not working together, right, it just makes everything a little bit stickier. Uh, I think, let me just see here. Um, I think we're kind of going back to the dating, dating example. Maybe this is a good example too, with like the whole high vibe thing. If I believed and I was an energetic match, like I'm now an energetic match to be in a relationship. I actually want a relationship. I'm not just saying I want one. I feel I'm good enough for a relationship, right? I want someone who's going to be a healthy, committed, loving partner who's supportive of my success and my dreams. And right, like that's what I'm, I'm now predominantly thinking I'm an energetic match for. I can get on the dating app and I can go on a date and I can meet my husband, even if I still have a bad personal day, right? I can still be low vibe and have a bad day. It's not like when I met my husband, I was like yippee skippy positive all the time, right? I, but I was, my predominant thought process in the direction of what I wanted, what I wanted to manifest, which was a relationship, which was my partner, right? That was all congruent and a match and positive. Hopefully that distinction makes sense because I think that's where we get ourselves. It's almost like we don't allow ourselves to feel or we get so scared about feeling anything other than positivity and that gets really toxic. And I think we have to remember, it's kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of this live stream. If we're operating from that place, 
that itself, we have to think about what is that actually a belief set of? What is that actually creating in terms of energy? That is, that's a fear. That's a, that's scarcity. That's, I don't believe I can actually have this unless I'm perfect, right? There's a lot there that we're actually not wanting to reinforce. Um, all right. I don't see any questions, but if you have them, do not be shy. Like, love them. So, so throw them at me. Um, mm -mm. Just seeing here if I had anything else I wanted to throw throw in here. So, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna share a little bit about um, a really important part with starting to get everything you everything you want. Um, I feel like I had one other. Oh, so the, the other thing I've really found when it comes to manifesting, especially manifesting in business, and when we're looking at things like strategy and action, when we think about that whole like being an energetic match or like the mindset of, I find the most powerful mindset, quite honestly, to manifest from is neutrality. You probably hear me talk about this a lot. My clients know I'm always talking about how as a CEO, like being neutral is really powerful. And I say that because I, I think it's both is helpful because I think we can hear a lot about this like high vibe positivity, which I'm, I'm here for some positivity as well. But I think we have to remember as humans, we're, we're just going to be, what is it, Brooke Castillo, who says we're always going to be 50-50. I think we can be more than 50-50. She means 50% like happiness, 50% sadness. I think we can swing and tip the scale to be more like 70-30. But we're still going to be humans. We're still going to have feelings. That's not going to go away. And I, I think we can actually unintentionally manifest what we don't want when we put so much pressure on this like perfect emotionality. And so neutrality, I think, is a really powerful manifesting energy because neutrality doesn't ask you to be positive or negative. It is it is really asking you to be. And if I think so much about when we think about like being in the energy of manifesting a fully booked business, manifesting six figures, manifesting 50K months, whatever that is, if if we're thinking about it needs to be, we need to, like that person would be like on cloud 10 all the time, or like if I'm super sad, right? Like I'm not gonna get results. If we think about either of those emotions, there are really high extremes and they're actually not very stable or regulated. And neutrality is kind of in the middle. And that's what I just always think about, like the, the energy of success. If you think about someone who, I'll use myself as an example. I've been fully booked for five and a half years. I'm so grateful to that. It makes me immensely happy. I love my business. I love my clients. I, I am so grateful for it, but it's not like I'm walking around on cloud 10, like screaming from the rooftops, expecting to parade every day, right? It's, it's just become really normal for me. And in the way, again, where I'm so, so grateful, but it's a very normal um, kind of neutral emotion I have around it. I've made consistent multi-five figure cash months for years and years now. And again, I'm so grateful. There was a time in my business where that seemed like a pipe dream. So, so grateful for that. But it's not something I'm really thinking about a lot. It's not like every day I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like the most positive person ever, right? I, I still have my like human ups and downs. I still, I still PMS, right? Like I still have the normal things. It's just a very more normal, neutral. It's almost like a more expected thing that I'm just more neutral around. And I think that can be really helpful when we're thinking about manifesting something and we're thinking about how do I get into the energy? How do I be an energetic match? How do I show up as if? I think sometimes we almost feel like we have to force ourselves to be this like, um, I don't know, this like clown version of ourselves. And I find almost anything really beautiful in my life that I've manifested, I've done so from such a more grounded energy that is just a little bit more neutral. It is a little less heightened, a little less negative. It's just a little more stable. Manifesting my husband, if we're going to use that as an example, right? I wasn't like, and now I'm going to meet my husband. I was sort of like, I hope I meet him. And if not, like, if it takes me 10 years, like, I'm cool if I'm single until my 40s. Like, I'm fine with that. Like, and I would love to, right? Like, it was just a more neutral space when I manifested the home we're in now, our, our my dream loft in New York City. I really wanted it, but it was very much this place where I'm like, I, I know that's mine. I'm the person who gets to live there. And if not, like, I'm just going to appreciate the apartment I'm in that much more. Like, it's going to be now or later. Right? It's just, it was just a more neutral energy and mindset. And I, the reason I, I reflect that is because I think that can be, help it be easier to latch into and to think about what's the mindset, the energy work you want to do. And as a CEO, right, this is also being it before you have it. The most effective way to show up in your business as a CEO, as a coach, as a service provider, as a therapist, as a OBM, whatever it is you do, is from a place of neutrality. That's when, think about the algorithm, right? If you're, the algorithm's going all out of whack, or if it's like the Olympics, right? The algorithm is just like 
so like heightened with the Olympics and that's all you see, that's great, but it's like very unsustainable and like it'll be kind of frustrating that's all you saw on your feed 24 seven. Kind of the same thing manifesting with your brain and your brain's algorithm and in business. It's just so much easier to energetically um, make the exp- uh, have the expression of your energy to show for your strategy, show for your action. If you're coming from a more neutral place, it's easier to notice opportunities. It's also easier to notice, opp- we forget, opportunities are not always just a client that's in front of your face. Sometimes, if we use the video game analogy and we're in the video game of life or of business, sometimes the opportunity looks like, oh, I've got to like beat this bad guy or I've got to like jump over these five blocks. I don't know. Can you tell I haven't played video games since I was 12 and it was like Mario Bros. Others. I don't know what video games do now. When I play video games, you have to like jump over blocks and like bust through them and like climb up the clouds. Um, so that's the video game analogy we're going with, right? But that those are opportunities to get to the next level. And so if you're more neutral, you can then start to notice how things that other people would be like, ugh, like that's horrible. Or like there's just a wall there, right? That's when if you're neutral, Right, and you have, you're the energetic match for like, of course this is mine, I'm gonna be fully booked, like I'm an energetic match for that. I'm also a little bit more neutral around it. You can start to see what someone else sees as a roadblock. You're like, oh, that's totally my opportunity to book my next client. Oh, that's totally the thing that's gonna help me grow, right? We start to see things in a really different light. And so, I mean, I guess we could call that positive, but I find when we're neutral, it's just so much easier to sift through things, to notice what's actually an opportunity that might not look like one, and to notice the opportunities from within what we're doing. Uh, we, I don't think I share this in the masterclass, but maybe this is helpful to hear here. I remember when I was getting fully booked, there was a, a time period where I wasn't getting yeses on all of my sales calls. We talked so much about sales calls, and I have like a, a very high conversion rate. I have like a 92, 93% sales call conversion rate right now. And one of the reasons for that is I got to a place where I got really neutral, right? I, I, I decided I was going to manifest a fully booked business and I got really neutral and I started to see every no as an opportunity that was going to help me get fully booked, right? Every no was an opportunity for me to learn how to follow up. Every no was an opportunity for me to learn how to navigate an objection. Every no was an opportunity for me to move on to the next person. Every no was an opportunity for me to learn how to refine how I made my offer. Every no was an opportunity for me to market research to learn something new. Every no was an opportunity for me to refine how I talked, like my messaging and what I was going to put in content, right? All of those no's Instead of seeing them, I wasn't like, yes, I got a no. And I wasn't sad I got a no. They, I was just very neutral. I started to see them as a CEO, right? I started to think like the fully booked coach. I started to be an energetic match for that. I started to see what someone else would see as like evidence that was a match for their, what they're manifesting, right? Evidence for what their belief set is, which is this isn't going to work for me. This will never happen. Instead, I had the belief set. I was an energetic match for, of course, this is all happening for me. Of course, this gets to work for me. Of course, I'm getting fully booked. Of course, every action I take is just bringing me one step closer to what I want, right? So I started to then see things more neutrally and see them as opportunities. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, And so that's how we can start to take some of, I think what can feel airy fairy i do believe in some of the universe side of it i do think sometimes you know we we have things present themselves to us that are divine intervention however you want to say that but even in those cases sometimes the biggest opportunities don't look like that at first unless you've really started to rewire your thought process and decide that everything gets to be an opportunity for you. A belief I've really cultivated thanks to my coach is that everything is always happening for me. Everything's always working out for me. Therefore, that's what I'm manifesting. Do you know what I mean? Like, therefore, that's what I'm energetic match for. That's how I show up to things. That's how I handle things. That's the neutrality I get. The two other quick pieces I wanted to share here before we hop off on the manifesting side with, with getting fully booked. One is, I, I think I share this maybe in the email I wrote, but I think it's just helpful to hear about it. If you do believe more in the... Um, yeah, the universe, God, um, a, a power higher than yours, whatever feels true for you. I also see the strategy and action side of things as the way we meet universe, God, a higher power halfway, as the way we demonstrate. Again, it's an expression of what we believe. It is an expression of what we have faith in. I find it's the way we can express and meet the universe, God, higher power halfway so that they know what to respond to, right? Because if we if we believe it's all energy and we believe universe, God, higher power, if you don't, that's okay as well, right? Then just we can go with the algorithm in your brain, your reticular activating system. I think in some ways it's all part of the same, but everyone's got different belief sets here, right? This is the way we can demonstrate, we can express, we can meet 
um, universe, God, higher power halfway. So they know what to meet us back with, right? Because we talk about like attracts like, energy attracts energy, right? How, if we're not showing up for that strategy, if we're not showing up with that action, if we're not showing up with that, how is there something that can be met back to us, right? That, I mean, that's also just physics. Um, so I, I think that's, um, I mean, they've done studies on this as well, so there's quite a lot of science around that. So that's a really helpful way I think about it. There's a great exercise from Mike Dooley, the triangle exercise, if you all don't know it. Just draw a triangle on a piece of paper with a line down the middle, and at the top you write what you're manifesting. So you're manifesting a fully booked business. You're manifesting six figures. You're manifesting a million dollars. And on the draw a line down the middle, on the left side of the triangle, you write everything you're responsible for. So your mindset, your energy, right? The strategy, the action, the things you can do. And on the right side, it's everything you're surrendering to universe, God, higher power, that, right, that's outside of your control. And I find this is a really helpful representation for all of us to see that it's always 50-50. We're always in co-creation. There's always something outside of us. We have all of this on the left side we are at choice for, we are in control of, we can co-create, we, um, we are at cause and effect of. And that's the stuff we do want to show up for, right? So that we can meet this other side, right? There's always going to be something outside of us that's meeting us halfway to help create any big goal. I hope, I hope that, that's one of my favorite exercises. That might be a fun one for y'all to play with as homework. And then the closing thought, and I know I'm cramming quite a bit in here, so questions, just throw them at me. Um, but my closing thought here, I think this also feels really important to say. As you manifest larger and larger results in your business, more success, getting fully booked, you expand your fully booked number, right? When I was first fully booked, I think my first fully booked number was 12. Now it's 20 to 25 clients, right? As you expand what that is as you make more money as you get more visible as you grow a larger audience right what i find for most of us is as we expand to have more and more all of us this is normal this is human tend to hit a threshold with how much capacity we have to hold what is good to manifest what is good in our life before we hit a little bit of a wobble gay hendrix calls this an upper limit call it a wobble we can call it just needing to stretch your capacity to have and hold right i mean i think it's also just practically speaking think about if you went to a buffet that had all the food in the world and you just ate everything you wanted at a certain point you'd get stuffed and you'd need to let it digest before you could eat some more food and so i say this because i think it's really important to normalize otherwise what i find happens is you start to manifest the things you want and it can feel very overwhelming to the system right you can stuff yourself and instead of just seeing this as a normal part of stretching your capacity to to hold good stuff and saying oh maybe i need to just integrate maybe i just need to digest a little bit here all my clients sometimes are just like you need to digest this is time to integrate right we either think oh it was a fluke or there's something wrong with me or we start to like get into scrambling mode or into desperation or we think we're screwing everything up or we're stuffed and we try to eat even more and more and more and more at the buffet, which is such an act of you know scarcity or fear or desperation. And so I think it's just really helpful to know. Um, I don't even like to say that it's self-sabotage because I, I don't even think it's self-sabotage as much as it is our systems calibrating for the next level and for having capacity to hold more. It's no different than you know, for those of us who used to have nine to fives, if you ever got a job promotion, suddenly had more responsibility, it probably took you a second to learn the new role and to stretch your capacity for the responsibility and to get used to the new coworkers, the new space, right? That's not self-sabotage. It's just, it takes a little bit of that integration and stretching period. And it's just a little outside our comfort zone, even when it's good stuff. And so, yes, some people might call that self-sabotage because we, we sometimes will do things that are old patterns of ours, old patterns will surface so that we can kind of bring ourselves back to a more stable, comfortable place. But I think it can be helpful instead of saying, oh, I'm self-sabotaging to really just frame this as like, oh, I was, that just means I've hit my capacity for success, for good, for clients, for whatever that is. My job now is I can keep in air quotes self-sabotaging, right? I can keep going into this pattern of whatever your pattern might might be, or I can see it for what it is and see this is my brain signaling to me it's time to practice digesting, it's time to practice integrating instead of you know pushing forward more, or I am going to essentially self-sabotage. I will lean into these patterns that aren't helpful because I don't know any other way to get myself to digest, to feel more comfortable. So I think that's just something I wanted to close on because 
as we're playing with these sorts of things and as you're playing with the tools, especially if you're new to my world and you start using the fully booked method and you start getting more clients and you start having more success, I think it can be a little confronting sometimes. You're like, wait a second, I have everything I want. Why am I crying? Why am I picking a fight with my spouse? Why am I suddenly feeling like, you know, I hate everything and I want to burn it down? And a lot of times it's simply we're just hitting that edge of our comfort zone. We're just hitting that edge of our capacity. And it's time to just take a five second pause a uh, couple weeks pause, right? To digest, to integrate instead of throwing everything out and then allow that to help you. Once you integrate, right? Once something becomes more normal, it's kind of like what I was talking about. It's like now, again, I'm so grateful for my business. I'm so grateful for my clients. I don't mean that to sound any way other than that. Like I literally write gratitude for my business and my clients every day, like, like beyond gratitude. But because I stretch my capacity, and because I've had time to digest over the years, right, I just see this as my new normal. So it doesn't feel like, I don't feel like I have to stretch my capacity more. If I was suddenly going to, I don't know, offer something completely different and hold a bunch more clients and make a bunch more money, right, I, I might have to then practice stretching my capacity there. But the goal is at each of those levels, right, you, you want to kind of titrate a little bit. And at each level, as you've expanded, as you've manifested what you've wanted, and it starts to feel a little like, ooh, this is starting to feel crunchy, that's the opportunity to practice integration and normalization. I always think about like, how can I, I um, hang out here until this feels like my new normal before then deciding I'm going to stretch to the, the next level. And that's not holding yourself back. I think that's actually the way in which we continue to manifest more and more. All right, I hope that was valuable for y'all. I had fun talking about manifesting. Let me know now or in the replay if you want more manifesting talks since I really talk about it. If you liked it, we'll do more of it. Otherwise, I've got some other topics coming up for you and always feel free to let me know what you want to hear about. As a reminder, again, the fully booked method, I've asked my team to keep it up until tomorrow. So you've got through the end of today if you want to watch that. Probably be up for a couple hours tomorrow before we pull that down. So catch that replay, drop a question for me if you have those. And then also a reminder, if you were considering the week-long strategy intensive my Your Marketing Multiplied Strategy Intensive, where we map out a marketing plan so you know exactly what to focus on every day, every week, every month to get in front of the right people, to grow an audience with the right people, to nurture them, and to bring in those right fit leads, those calls, those clients, and as well as the messaging, the positioning around that. Um, that special that I'm offering, I've only offered this once in the last year, and I don't know that I'm going to offer it again of 250 off is ending at the end of the day today. If you're sort of like, I'm still thinking about that, Kim, DM me. You can just say, hey, I'm thinking about that. I'll give you a couple days window as long as you let me let me know or if you book a consultation, I'll drop a link for a consultation as well. But that is ending and I don't know if I will bring that back again. And then if you, I know someone reached out to me and asked if they had a different um, focus for the intensive, if you wanted to focus on something different in the intensive other than your marketing strategy and your messaging, absolutely that's okay it's your time it's a week-long intensive and you also get that bonus content review but if you let's say you want to work on sales conversions or you want to map out a launch strategy because you've got a launch coming up or you wanted to work on your sales calls or you wanted to map out a content strategy something else we absolutely can tailor this to you. So since someone else had asked me that, I thought I'd address that here. So I will drop the information for that. My DMs are open. Also on my Instagram, if you're on my email list, just shoot me a note. Even if it's just they say, Kim, I'm thinking about this. I just need one or two more days. I'm happy to give one or two two more days. I'm just not going to give two more, two more weeks on that special. All right. I love you all so much. It means so much to have you here. Thank you for hanging with me for the conversation. Again, questions on, on this, if you're watching the replay, drop them for me, and then I'll be back next week. Next week, we're diving into some strategy. I think our topic is all about some of the big strategy shifts I've made this year, specifically to stay fully booked and to make 25K to 40K cash months. And then let me know, I think the week afterwards, tell me if this is interesting to you, but I think we're going to talk more about productivity and how I'm able to get so much done in my business with 20 to 25 one-on-one clients. I didn't think that was something people wanted to know, but one of my clients was actually asking about this today. So I think we're going to make bump that topic up. Um, so if that's something you want to hear about, let me know because I will tailor these to you. All right. I love you all. I'll see you next week. Bye.